We're into the World Cup semi-finals. Now, Magnus Carlsen, world number one, was expected to get this far. But his opponent, Nija Abasov from Azerbaijan, was not expected, being just the 2600 GM. I mean, I say just, incredibly strong player, but not in the 2700 club. So he's performed out of his skin. He's got the home crowd behind him. So even though Magnus is favourite, this is going to be a tense fight. Now, Magnus kicks off here with e4, and we go into a Sicilian, which Abasov loves to play, and we get a tactical game on our hands. But watch the opening prep Magnus brings. So we go into this Rossolimo. Black now choosing, uh, choosing the e6 variation. We get captures here by Magnus, shatters the pawn structure, and now he goes for b3, preparing to Fianchetto this bishop, keeping an eye on c4, and now after d6, we get e5. Seen many times before, it gives a pawn, but shatters the structure for black. Such a key theme in this opening, you know, can white take advantage of the pawn structure? Now, the most common move here is knight takes on e5. There's been various games from there. There are a couple of different queen moves can be tried after that. But Magnus does not take the pawn. He goes pawn d3. And as far as I can see, in the chess.com and Lee Chess databases, this is a novelty. Can't find any games here. So he lets Abasov keep the pawn. It was protected with f6. And then he just carries on his slow development. What's Magnus got in mind? Well, after knight h6, developing, looking to come back here, keep an eye on some key dark squares, Magnus now unleashes it with rook to g1. He's not castling kingside. He's going for the throat in this game. Love it. So Abasov continues with bishop to a6. I mean, that is an ugly piece. Can't really find a good diagonal with these pawns being where they are. So it comes here, but how much future there? Well, it's preparing to chop, uh, chop a knight if it ever hopped. But Magnus now goes g4, cracking on with his plan. Knight f7 drops back, keeps an eye on the g5 push. Magnus could do it already, but he just carries on developing some pieces first with queen to e2. We get bishop e7, bishop b2, and now queen a5 starts to try and drum up counterplay on the queen side. And Magnus now plays a really practical move, pawn to c4. He shuts out two bishops at once because this one's now going nowhere. It stops this pawn ever moving, which hems in this bishop. So some nice positional ideas to it, even though it creates a backwards pawn on the d file here that black could attack later. And now g5 from Abasov. So with Magnus shutting down the queen side, he looks to do the same here. But Magnus insisting, let's open things up. Pawn h4, pawn h6 played. Rook h1 comes back to this file. That's where the action's now taking place. We see castles from black connecting the rooks, and now Magnus does the same, which looks slightly surprising on the surface, because black can now win a pawn. This wasn't done because king c2 is the follow-up. You prepare to bring these rooks here, so the queen has to come away so as not to get trapped. Rook a1, queen b6, Bishop c3 threatens to skewer, win the exchange, so if the rook slides away, well then the game goes on from here. And long story short, white's actually a bit better here, despite being two pawns down, because the open a file is a big asset, plus obviously the pawn structure is a bit of a mess. So, the pawn not taken, the queen just dropped back voluntarily, back towards the centre, and now knight e4 from Magnus, beautiful central outpost, and this is really a key moment of the game. Because that knight looks so good, it got me wondering, well why can't black go f5 here? Kick away that knight, you know, it can't hop here, can't hop here. Well, the computer shows that the knight should just drop back. This is the top move. And actually pushing this pawn was a big weakening of this diagonal. Because now this pawn is really loose. The rook is unprotected. So say you capture here, for example, going after this knight. Well, the knight can jump in and there's threats to take here, open up the bishop. You can't take, of course, or you run into this uh, fork or skewer, call it what we will, of these two pieces. So there's just lots of tricky problems for black to solve, plus this pawn's under fire by the queen. So we didn't see f5 played. 
Instead, we see takes on h4, another really ugly move when we consider the pawn structure. I mean, look at that, three sets of double pawns, horrible. But it is a decent move because after knight recaptures, the rook now comes to this open g file. And if Magnus plays too passively, you know, say he just played a move like pawn f3 or something here. Well, black is the one actually that could start seizing some initiative. But Magnus plays so energetically now with pawn to f4. Brilliant understanding of the position that he really shows with this move. Now what to do as black, you know, the center starting to crumble if you don't play actively, or f5 could come, create a monster square for the knight. So we see takes, best move, now knight recaptures here, this is Magnus's idea, you know, he's unleashed this monster. Now the bishop takes, that knight was an awful piece to deal with, attacking the rook, etc. Now we see takes with check, into mezzo, and after the king moves, you know, we don't see one of these pieces blocking, King b8 was best to now bring this bishop back into the game. Well, Magnus now picks up this bishop and he starts threatening all of these pawns around here. You know, nasty piece to have in the position. So bishop c8 recycles into the game, looks at the g4 pawn. And now Magnus, he goes on the offensive with his own rook. Now he leaves this pawn hanging. This is such a tactical game, right? But why can't you take it? Well, now the rook invades. Hang on, can't this rook slide back, hold everything together, keep the knight on the board? Well, no, because queen takes, yes, this one drops, but then this one drops, loose rook, and actually white is a minor piece ahead here. So taking the pawn, no good for black. We see rook d6, best move, does give this pawn here, which was weak and likely to drop at some point anyway, but it kicks back the queen, and black now takes here with tempo. The queen drops away and rook e6, good move. You have to be careful. You know, if you pick up this pawn, you've actually got problems here, the pieces are overloaded. So you can take here, you could have also started with taking there, but taking here is good. If rook recaptures, you do this, black is winning, minor piece ahead. If you take here, black is winning, still a piece ahead here, what is it, yeah, um, one minor, uh, rook ahead here even I think, or rook and knight, yeah, you're killing it. So you just can't go for that one. So the queen drops back, keeps an eye on this rook, and now we see knight e5. And things are getting dangerous for Magnus. You know, look at that monster in the center of the board. Do you wanna give up your bishop here? Well, what Magnus does first is king to c2. Adding some protection here, coming away from any discovered checks from that knight, and it looks like there could be a fork here. You know, what if takes and then look and land something here? Well, you can actually take here into mezzo, skewering the queen to the rook. So you have to take back, then your rook drops, you're in exchange down. So the king comes up to b7, gets away from these tricks. Now we see rook e3 from Magnus, covering some key squares. We see queen e7 attacking this knight on the edge of the board. So it hops into f5, hits the queen, targets the pawn, queen g5 hits the knight, threatens rook g2, you have to be so on your toes in this game, right? And so Magnus now chops off one of these attacking black pieces. Abbasov flicks in this rook to g2, skewers queen to king, so the rook has to block. We see an exchange, queen recaptures, and now the queen takes here. Very logical, keeping this pin. Plus you've got opposite colored bishops. Could that give some drawing chances? Well, the challenge here for Abbasov after rook to h5, queen f7, is even though the computer gives it roughly level here, black has to be careful because the pawn structure is a mess. And if white starts attacking, there's less pawns to shield that king. So we see queen h2 now played from Magnus. But wait, this is an absolute blunder. But it's so not obvious to see why it's a blunder. What he had to do was actually keep his queen back on this square in contact with f1, maybe play a move like king b2 or c3. Why is this a problem was the amazing shot for black of queen to f1, but really not an easy idea to spot. You know, you leave this pawn hanging, for example. Why can't white just take there? The bishop's still covered. Well, then you can chop, queen recaptures, and queen e2 check simply picks up the bishop. 
So that's no good. You know, after queen f1, you cannot take that pawn. And what else to do if you play a nothing move? Black's got this threat of rook g6 and rook g2, and you just can't fight against that. It's game over. So the best defense here is queen d2, but then still rook g6, and if rook h2, rook g1. This time the queen's coming here, and it's basically just all over for um, white when you start analyzing it through. Crazy attacking resource, but Abasov misses the whole invasion idea. He goes for rook g6, really understandable not to see that, opening up his bishop now, but now Magnus can just consolidate. Bishop f4, we see rook f6 back, hitting that piece, but Magnus finds this awesome move of bishop e3. And Abasov said to Magnus after the game he'd missed this one. This is what Magnus said in interview. The bishop covers the square. No invasion anymore. Also attacks this pawn. We see bishop f5 and the pawn drops off. You know, you couldn't defend it like this or this one drops. Too hard to hold on to as a doubled weak pawn. And now queen g6 played hits d3 but Magnus ignores with king to c3 because if black captures well this is a huge attack really thematic idea if the king captures you decoy it away check wherever the king goes the rook closes the trap so there's big problems now for black you're under fire so we see rook e6 played looking to invade on e6 here but still, Magnus had a winning move, which he saw after the game. As soon as he played this one, he could still go bishop takes on a7. And it's a winning tactic. Again, for these reasons mentioned, the king is too exposed. But this time you check from f2. King do, uh, goes and you pick up the bishop here. That's a lost end game. Two pawns down, plus the white ones are connected. But what Magnus does here is rook to h4. And now bishop g4 is possible, threatening rook e2, invading, kicking the queen. But Magnus, he now takes on a7. And this is almost winning, except in one amazing variation, which Magnus spotted at the board. Again, he mentioned this afterwards. So there's this crazy resource of queen g7 check. Now it looks impossible because the bishop can come back and block the check. You've just won a pawn for nothing, two pawns upright, still an attack going to come against the king. But here's the amazing resource for black, queen to g5. And not only do you pressure this rook, so things like rook e2 add some danger. You know, if the queen moves off the h-file, the rook drops. But also, you look at this d2 square. So there's this huge threat now to go rook e2 kick the queen away and then land queen d2 checkmate so you can move this bishop away somewhere you know the computer says bishop b6 which is kind of crazy you can take then what does it say queen b8 check start forcing some kind of perpetual but long story short it doesn't give white as winning the position anymore amazing resource but abasov goes queen f6 check not g7 so now you can slide away with the king and how do you stop this huge attack on the black king here because once again if you capture you're running into this and you're picking up this huge attack once you recapture the bishop you can chuck a pawn but does nothing queen recaptures there's this huge threat now to basically bring the rook in on this rank and if rook e7 well then you can check from here king b7 and the rook invades to the back rank you've got tons of problems to deal with so what we see from Abasov, not capturing the bishop, but rook e5 to stop this queen invading like this. But now simply d4 and everything's overloaded. Magnus didn't even capture the unprotected bishop. The rook has to move surely, you know, come back to e8 to cover this check here. But then you can take on g4, still a huge attack. Still this bishop is immune because of the invasion. And if you don't retreat the rook here, which we uh, didn't see in the game, if you give the check and c5, well then still what to do, the rook's got to move. Yes, you can cover this one like this, but then you're running into mate in two with queen d8 check, king a6, and that shuts the trap. So this was the final position. Abasov chucks in the towel. Magnus goes one up. All to do now for the youngster from Azerbaijan in tomorrow's game. In other news, Fabi and Prague drew their game. So a really tense battle there between those two. I hope you enjoyed this one. 
do check out the video on screen for another epic game of chess and thanks very much for watching. See you soon.